Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Christine Hansen, who is our first guest to ever appear from Luxembourg. How are you doing, Christine? Hey, hey, I'm well. There's not many Luxembourgers out there, so it's quite a rarity. It's a rare commodity. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And uh, and Christine, uh, Christine's the founder of Sleep Like a Boss. And Christine means business, uh, a business coach, uh, a business, co a one of a kind business coach. And what we're going to talk about today is creating a content flow to bring in perfect clients. All right. So let's let's get into it, uh, into it, Christine. So everybody is struggling today or say they're struggling today to find to get to the right target customer and we're getting bombarded from all sides on marketing and everything uh, we're so distracted as people our buyers are distracted the sellers are distracted everybody's overwhelmed so how do you how do you start to build something that has not just process to it but it's it's something that can flow and flow like you said it's a, a flow and something that you know can build on itself and is systematic yeah, it's a good question. And it's interesting because just this morning I had a client who is in, in network marketing, which is like one of the most difficult, arguably, because everyone is doing the same thing. Like literally everyone has the same marketing materials, sells exactly the same product. But I love to use it as an example, because why do some people feel more attracted to some than others? Because it shouldn't matter, right? Everyone has the same. And mm. that's where attracting the perfect clients come in. And kind of my philosophy that I teach is really very, be very egocentric, which goes against everything we've ever been taught. Like we're taught to be looking after others, putting others first. It's not about you. The, the sentence, it's not about you. It's not always about you. You know, like the world doesn't revolve around you. Well, in this case, it actually does. <laughs> it really <laughs> does. So, and it, if you when you're creating content doesn't matter what it is about it has to be or it should start with what is interesting to you there's different approaches you have very analytical approach you know where you go and look at seo at different at the comp competition what are they doing what is the best article that ranks and i feel you can marry the two but ideally first start with what is interesting to you what kindled your passion for what you are doing or selling or helping with and then come up with those topics so that they're actually interesting to you or maybe something that you even want to dive deeper in it, eventually or potentially you can also look then at analytics and see mm -hmm. okay what is the crossover where is actually a great gap or where will this rank highly I hire people for that, to be honest, because I have no clue. Analytics are not my thing. They make me look cross-eyed and I'm just like, it's boring me to death. But that would be the perfect formula and it's going to be very easy to create content. Now, when I talk about content, I really want to differentiate between long-term content and short-term content. Mm -hmm. So long-term content. Be, just, and yeah. just before you get into that, just let me just underline a couple of things you said there, because I think they're, they're really important. Uh, and what you said about writing or creating content around something that you're that you're interested in that excites you uh it because you can tell you can almost tell content written by people who have zero interest in it uh, <laughs> or feel like this is what they should be saying this is what mm -hmm. i should be writing about so i agree it's like um what well, you know it's like they say in in if you go to a, a creative writing class or a screenwriting class or whatever what do they always say to you write about what you know yes Absolutely. So it's not about necessarily taking the SEO highest ranking topic and researching it and it bores you to death, but you think you should be doing it. I'd much rather you write about something that might not necessarily show up, but it's your pet peeve. You know, it could also be things that you don't like. I actually encourage people sometimes to start with everything that you think is wrong in your industry or that you dislike. It's somehow much easier for us to vent <laughs> than to say something neutral or positive. So sometimes that's fun too. You know, it could even be a whole podcast, to be honest, like the grumpy I don't know, marketers podcast. I've come up with an idea that I should write that there down. There you go. Yeah, you should write that down. Uh... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll bleep that out. <laughs> so nobody steals it. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, whoever yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, 
But yeah, so start with being egocentric because that is not going to get you bored. It's also about being content rather than just having content. You know, mm. it's really going to show and you're going to have a lot of ideas. And I think a lot of people think content is like you have to do something every day, et cetera, et cetera. And I think you really have to differentiate between schmoozing Google, which is absolutely worth it because mm. digitally it's great organic free traffic, which you would use blogging for, podcasting, YouTube and Pinterest. Those are all the searchable platforms that I use for long term and short term would be your social media. So if we look at long term, you wouldn't necessarily do something daily. I know there are more and more podcasters who do daily episode. I think the first one was probably John Lee Dumas with Entrepreneur on Fire. There's more and more, but in initially really do what you can come up with really. Mm -hmm. And then short term for your social media, it is a little bit more tricky. But even, even if you stick, like I think when you stick with what you're really interested in, it's going to be much easier. Now I talk about a flow because I am super lazy. One of my tagline is to really embrace your lazy and do bigger profits. And I'm teaching that methods all the time because I really learned fairly quickly that when I do things that bore me, that annoy me, I'm so tired. You know, no. I literally get tired and not creative. It just drains it out of me. So the way that I do it, and it's nothing new, but I feel it's an aha moment for a lot of people is that I use, I repurpose everything. I use my video and that's it. That's all I do. I do interviews like this one and mm -hmm. I outsource the rest. In the beginning, I did it all of my own. So when you're starting out, don't be a perfectionist. You don't need to edit it or anything. Just upload the thing, extract the audio and create a podcast with it. Have it transcribed for your blog or have someone take notes for your blog. And you can find yeah. lots of people like that on Fiverr or on Upwork. And that way you schmooze Google in a lot of ways. You have YouTube, which is a great search engine. Because you use text yeah. in your blog and on YouTube in the description and on your podcast, Google is going to pick up on it, especially if you're consistent. And a podcast is an audience that is just super, super attentive. So they have a much higher intensive span, a very loyal. And I love voice. I honestly right. love listening to people. And I, if I cannot stand someone's voice, chances that I'm going to be working with them are very, very small. <laughs> You know, so it's yeah. it's important to to know that because after you figure out the process, you can outsource pretty much mm. every step apart from the video, and that is not a lot of work. Like literally no, just it, jumping on there and uploading it to Dropbox, Google Drive, whatever you use. That is something that is a flow that is easy to do, allows you to stay consistent and not burn out and schmooze Google with consistency and with great content, obviously. Yeah, and the great point that you make there is the is the, is the idea that, con that content, you, you know, you do your video, so you produce one piece of content, but then as you say, you repurpose it. I mean, it's the same as what we do here. This video mm -hmm. will be, this will be on YouTube, it'll be on our sales pop website. The audio will be on all of the podcast platforms from, you know, uh, iTunes to Spotify to all of those. Uh, and I think that sometimes people don't realize that that's the beauty of content. If you if you focus on just creating one decent piece of content, you can use it in so many ways. Instagram snippets, whatever it is you want to do. Exactly. But the point the point is an excellent. By the way, I love it so far. We've be egotistical and embrace your lazy. I love it. There is no <laughs> messages that nobody else is giving. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I feel we at a time where, I mean, when I started out, that's seven years ago. So not an, an eternity, but in internet land, that is an eons of time, right? Oh yeah. And when I started out, it was the height of the four-hour week. It was the height of Entrepreneur on Fire, and it was hustle, 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 hustle. Gary V at the time was still mm. on steroids. I mean, he's still nervous, but he started to. If I look at him now and what he did in the beginning. He's calmed down quite a bit and has become a lot more open as to how much help he's getting for his productions. Mm. When I started out, that was still kind of uh, not too transparent. So a lot of people literally burned out with that. And it was, you don't rest. And because I started in the sleep industry, you, you sleep when you're dead or nobody <laughs> sleeps. Sleep is for the week, you know, all of that crap. 
And I feel it has changed a lot in the last few years. Like it, I think mental health has become a lot more important, personal mm -hmm. development and the feminine as well, the going and embracing your masculine strategical energy, as well as your feminine intuition energy, no matter whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. You always have both. I feel that has started to really, really creep through as well. And that's my favorite way of working, you know, like mm. really embracing the two because otherwise it doesn't work. I don't think yeah. you can only live on intuition, but I don't think it's healthy to only use strategy either, not long term. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree with you. And in fact, I think because of all you mentioned analytics and that earlier, I mean, because of all the tools and all the analytics and all of that, I think we have diminished intuition a bit those those hunches those gut feels are sometimes like very very powerful and 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 yeah you obviously need data and that to look at but you shouldn't ignore the other side too because uh I, I do think it's such an incredibly important thing is to have your intuition and have your gut feel and 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 then and then you can always look for evidence to back that up um the other interesting thing that you were just saying there about the change in the change in attitudes and the change in the world. I think, yeah, I think it started pre pandemic, but certainly the pandemic accelerated yeah. it. I mean, we now have people who've, as you say, I mean, mental health issues, they've rediscovered their families. They've decided they've also kind of taken a look around and said, why am I living in this high cost area to be close to that office that let's face it, the next time there's a downturn, I'm probably going to get laid off anyway. And then I'm struggling. <laughs> yes. So I might as well just go and live somewhere where a good, good cost, a good standard of living, good cost, you know, where I can raise a family and then I'll find a job online. Exactly. And it's been I love it. And I'm also like, damn it, because the market has obviously become a lot more saturated, mm -hmm. even though there is no competition. But I can see it specifically with my clients who are in health coaching or in life coaching. It has become uber popular. The demand is enormous because, yes, we were confronted with our mortality, which nobody likes doing. And we had mm -hmm. no choice. So a lot of people ask a lot of existential questions. People got to know what you and I have been doing for years, which is this Zoom. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. before when I told someone I work through Zoom, that I don't know what they imagined it was, you know, but now yeah. it's like, oh, yeah. do you know Zoom? And it's like, darling. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> what, what rock have you been under? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's it's always a pro and con, but ultimately I I do think there's one, everyone finds their perfect client or their perfect coach you know because mm -hmm. the the goal though and that's what i tell everyone who's starting business it's not your job to find clients it's your job to make sure that the clients that need you find you which is different it gives the whole mm -hmm. thing a different energy and it also means that whenever you create content or whatever you do you do it out of a place of service versus oh, i need to find five clients this month or even mm -hmm. more depending on how you structure your business right so i find that it is very empowering um and it's it's making you happy you know because you do something with your life that contributes to someone else's when you see the transformations happen it's so worth it versus before mm -hmm. i don't know a lot of people were in data before or you know just in just jobs that they didn't even agree with necessarily. And it's just, you have one life. Yeah. It's more fulfilling if you do something that, you know, really, really, really makes you happy. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And and I think, and that's why, I, I, as you said, I think if you're going to create content is you you have to enjoy doing it because it'll be hard sometimes, just like everything else. I mean, I'm sure there are days exactly. when you're like, oh, um, but I'm fortunate because I get to talk to people like you and that always uplifts <laughs> me. So, uh, but but I know that, uh, you know, that that some people think, well, I, I can't do content and stuff, you know, it's, it's too hard. It's not me. Um, I, and I like your ideas. Just start small, just do something and and be authentic. I guess that's the thing is just be, be who you are, because that's another exactly. thing I see a lot. I see a lot of people, you know, starting podcasts now and they're trying to sort of differentiate or they're trying to be manic or whatever it is. And, and you're, no. you're going to go and look and like, just be yourself. Exactly. And it's really interesting because, and we started this discussion before we interviewed, TikTok is like the newest thing and mm -hmm. a new word has, it was born, not now, but a couple of years ago, which is content creators. Nobody, I mean, that word literally didn't exist 
five years ago. Like no, the only cu- yeah, cu- didn't. curators all worked in museums, right? Exactly. And it's like <laughs> content curators or content creators. What does that even mean? Now it's like a profession. I'm a content creator, just like an influencer. It's like, you're not a star mm-hmm. anymore. You're an influencer. So now it's mm-hmm. a content creator. And interestingly, it was, there's one video that went absolutely viral on TikTok and it was a video that was taken from Instagram where you have this girl walking onto a balcony with a beautiful view and it is the perfect sound the perfect filter and someone asked can you repost it on TikTok without any sound and without a filter and you can hear her come a bit closer come a bit closer okay I have to smile a little bit more so all the romanticism that worked well on Instagram was taken out and the Instagram video that she reposted so the perfect version was like not bad it was maybe 500,000 views this one was 3 million views mm. because people are craving the authentic again so if you have crappy lightning if you don't even have a great microphone but that's you it works honestly and i think that's really also where we need to take the pressure of it doesn't need to be professionally produced all the time you know it can just be you in your car with your phone between you know picking up your kids from school totally legit yeah there's a guy there's a there's a there's a guy who does a lot of sales stuff um i think his name is gary burns or something maybe it's gary burns i'm not sure but any or brian burns sorry um, but he he's done his for years, but he literally does it with his phone walking down the street. Um, you know, you hear all the noise of traffic, you know, he's look, walking past. But that's his thing, and he's been doing it for so long. But again, it's the content, right? He looks exactly. re- relaxed doing it. He knows what he's obviously uh, is excited about what he's talking about. So the, the production values don't really matter that much. Exactly, exactly. And I think that really helps people who start in the online industry because you tend to see the polished first and Mm -hmm. then when you start to really go digging you see those whole fan currents that are kind of underground i guess but i'm fairly certain or pretty much completely certain that they make a lot more money (laughs) than (laughs) others that are more polished and it's a lot less pressure and a lot less hustle which i really hope for everyone to achieve And I think the other thing, uh, the other thing, uh, Christine, is that this this whole idea of we live in an in- a world of instant gratification, right? Everything mm. is and everything is easy and instant and all of this. And so, if you're going to start off on doing content, uh, etc., is you have to you have to be prepared to play the long game a bit, and you yes. have to be prepared for it to take longer than you would like. And you're like, oh, why am I not an overnight sensation like all these people? Well, guess what? None of them were overnight sensations. Exactly. No, absolutely. And I like to compare it to, you know, when you meet someone, you're not going to ask them hand in marriage on the first date, like most likely not, or you're just going to be the crazy person, you know, like (laughs) if you're going to date as a woman and you're like, I want to have 10 babies, please marry me tomorrow. There's no way. So you need to date a little bit. And it's the same in the online world. It will take at least three months of consistency for any algorithm to take you seriously most of the time Mm -hmm. specifically google that's a very tricky one like they want to be schmoozed as i said they want to Mm -hmm. see you a real deal that you are credible that your content is being liked by who reads it that you are consistent and then they will start to introduce you to their friends and to their family etc etc and if that goes well, then they will introduce you to everyone. But that trust is a journey. So, mm-hmm. and I see that a lot of people get everything set up and they're so proud and exhausted because it was very, very, it felt it was so much work. They had to learn so much. And then it's like, so what now? And it's like, honey, we're just starting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you just got dressed. Now we need to go yeah. on the first day. You know? That was the easy part. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I think having realistic expectations is also very helpful <laughs> yeah no it is it is because i i've heard from people i've talked to people and you know they could get very despondent you know they start off something and they say well my video you've got five views and everything and i said well, exactly. that's cool that's five well it's five people who may not have heard from you before so exactly that's a start. imagine them sitting in a room that's five people yeah. you know yeah, having you... that attention of five people that's be thankful that's a lot Exactly, exactly. And and you have to build it over time. And yeah, and as you said, I mean, you can outsource all your SEO and uh, do get it optimized, get your content optimized, get it into a flow. Like you're saying, there's people on Fiverr, on Upwork. Um, it's, it's, I mean, I guess that's the beauty today is like you can outsource as much as you want and you can fit your budget, to be perfectly honest. I mean, you I can agree. outsource it to 
to somebody on the other side of the world who can do it very cost effectively for you. Exactly. Work with students. There's so many different ways. Get creative. Like even your kids. I literally have one client whose 12 year old son is doing all of her video uploads, you know, like he was like, hey, mom, here's my ring light. And <laughs> so they have a great deal working, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the, that is the thing, actually, uh, uh, about it is, is, is uh, especially the people coming up now. I mean, they're so savvy about everything. Yeah, she just had a ring light. I mean, I had one day um, in my home office, like when somebody, one of my son's friends passing through, he goes, oh, I like the ring light. Nice ring light. That's good. Where you get that one and i'm like huh what no. <laughs> and then it was like oh i like your microphone and all. and then you realize and they realize then they're talking about it for gaming or something whatever but but the thing yeah. is there's so much there's so much help out there for you there is there is get creative it's doable be patient i feel that is also one every business works with momentum and yes you can collapse time by getting help and by investing you can buy a little bit of time, but ultimately it's physics. You need mm. momentum and momentum starts small, always, always, always. Yeah, and I think that's a great message to end on because I do think that people oftentimes, you know, they start things, especially nowadays, like they start things and then they get discouraged because it's not working immediately. And so they, you know, so just give yourself, it's going to, here's, here's my advice to everyone. It doesn't matter whether it's content or whether it's business in general, everything takes longer than you'd like it to. And now it sucks. <laughs> I'm not it does. <laughs> oh, me neither. Me neither. Nobody would ever say that patience is one of my great traits. But, um, but I have learned over the years that you have to kind of force yourself sometimes, as long as you're doing the right things. Today, we call it surrendering. <laughs> <laughs> surrender to the process well listen uh, christine this has been fantastic all of christine's information is going to be below this video but uh, before we go please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do yeah so i'm a business coach and consultant consultant is for the strategy and coach is for everything that you need for personal support because it's a journey it's a ride and uh, if you want to find anything, you, like literally you can find everything you need on christinemeansbusiness.com. That's where you find my social media links where you can stalk me. And um, I do have a book. If you are low budget, I want to DIY it first. And then, no, I need help and hire me, obviously. But first, if you just want to read it, it's a great book. It's called We Mean Business, a practical guide for creative entrepreneurs, coaches, and small businesses to build your brand and grow your business online. You can get that on Amazon or through my website as well. And um, it's actually built from a podcast. So you have a lot of different topics on there. Everything about online business. Perfect. Uh, that's fantastic. So um, we'll we link to the book as well. So I'd encourage you to check it out. Thanks again, Christine. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again really soon. Thank you.